progress. It's actually my first time doing an overall training for everyone. So if there's anything that you feel like I missed or anything that you think is unclear, can you just like send me an email and then I'll make these better? Because the goal is to do this every other week from now on or once a month actually. Um, so then I'll have new information and everyone who joins later than you can also learn from um, this presentation. Okay, so today we're going to talk about async client interviews and VP community at Brain Trust. And I just want to set us on the mindset correctly. You can work for anyone, but you choose to work for yourself, right? So your business, a lot of times it's freelancer word, you know, it, it comes with other connotations. I think on Brain Trust, we know the type of freelancers that really succeed and are really client ready. So my job here is to get you to think in that mindset, okay, and communicate to you what that type of talent looks like and how they act. You are your own boss, you are a business, you have to think more than your skills, you're representing your entire self as an entity, if that makes sense. Um, just a quick overview, brain trust, um, for those who are newer, you keep 100% of your earnings. Um, typically Fortune 1000 brands on the platform, we do have some high growth startups, um, the goal is to get you interesting projects and good pay, right? We don't we don't take anything from you. Um, and in terms of agenda, I want to talk about client interviews. Before the interview is actually when the interview starts. Okay, during the interview, what you should do: comment, interview questions. I um, pulled a few roles on the platform right now for engineering, product, and design, so we can do like an interactive mock uh, interview session. Um, and then finally, best Zoom setups, because Zoom setup actually really matters. For those um, joining us today, if you can turn on video, that would be appreciated. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, the only reason why I like video is because I want to get feedback from you. And without visual cue, I have no idea. Um, and plus, you know, it's just when we talk about client interviews, everyone's on Zoom video. So it's kind of, you know, it goes, comes with the territory. Um, so let's dive in before the interview, right? So the interview actually starts when the first message is set. And I'm talking about when you, um, brain trust, when you submit a proposal or sometimes the client will, will ask, invite you to submit a proposal. That's when the interview actually starts because that's the interaction that you have with the client. Try to respond within 24 hours. Here's the thing. We did a um, a lot of data. We did a lot of um, business intelligence poll on the proposals that get accepted. 86% of proposals accepted or moved to the interview phase are submitted within 48 hours, and we suggest 24 hours because it you actually stand out better. Because if 86% are 48 hours, the faster the better. Um, and I'm not saying like a knee jerk reaction type response, but like a thoughtful response um, with urgency is what we're aiming for here. Um, and when you do respond, a client will say, hey, would you like to, uh, we would like to uh, chat with you. What are some availabilities? You always want to provide either a Calendly link or some kind of calendar schedule link um, or three available slots to speak. So Calendly link is, is really what we recommend. The reason is because we've literally have clients say, hey, we're just gonna go with, we're going with the first person who gives us the easiest way to schedule with them. Um, what you do not want to do is a bunch of back and forth of, hey, I can do Tuesday at 10 o'clock. And then that's it. Like you have to give people three, at least three different time slots in their time zone. Okay, so never have this ambiguity of scheduling because it reflects on you, like how organized you are, how well you're able to communicate. If you want to reschedule, sure, things happen, reschedule, do not be a no-show. If you're a no-show, unfortunately, that's, I mean, we don't kick you off the <laughs> platform, but we get feedback from clients um, and we do make internal notes about that. Um, and it, it's just not a good setting precedents on the client side. So uh, any questions about that scheduling, that should be pretty straightforward. 
preparing your speaking toolbox. So this is something that, you know, after doing hundreds of mock interviews with people in the past several months, I realized what helped people a lot is actually creating a Google Doc of various paragraphs that you can just pull out depending on the type of questions people ask. So clients can ask a variety of questions, but really what they're asking boils down to almost the same thing. What they want to hear is almost the same thing. So you can write not scripts, but basically talking points for yourself for various type of questions. Have that prepared in a Google Doc and practice that. So then you'll know which paragraph to pull out depending on what, what type of question um, they ask. And that's part of the training to be able to hear and decipher what they're really asking, which we'll drill into in a little bit. But that's where practice makes perfect. When you hear a certain type of question asked in different ways, many times enough, then you'll be able to say, okay, this matches these answers that I've already prepared. Okay, does that all make sense? Yes. Okay, so um, before I go further, can I just get a quick understanding of what is the biggest challenge? Like what made you want to join this session today? So I can make sure I address it instead of just reading to you my slides. Is it confidence? Is it um, like what to do when you're thrown off guard? Is it you just feel like you have no luck with interviews? Like what is it that are like the top challenges for you right now? I, I've just started this process and I, I haven't experienced any challenges, but um, I, you know, things have evolved in the interview process for designers over the years. And uh, I wanted to get a sense for how much case studies come into the modern hiring practice with, with the people who come on to Brain Trust. Case studies. So having clients, clients asking you to walk through case studies during the interview, is that what you're saying? Right, or in the portfolio. Oh, okay. I can tell you case studies are definitely in demand, um, Taylor. In terms of design specific roles, I think how in depth they go through that and how much they expect really depends on the client. So definitely always prepare to be able to speak to case studies and be ready to share screen, right? You wanna have your tabs already pulled up and ready to share screen while you're interviewing. Um, but we, it's really case by case how much they wanna see that. So we can also guide you through that depending if you have a role that you're interested in. Um, I'm curious. So, um, for example, there's 11 proposals, say 10 proposals. How many of those 10 proposals will the client interview out of those 10 usually you would see? Um, well, we typically actually get single digit proposals because we screen all of the proposals to make sure oh, okay. they're relevant. Um, yeah, we're not like, the uncurated marketplaces where you get tens to 20 something. Sometimes, yeah, it'll go into double digits, primarily for design because of different aesthetics. You wanna give clients different visuals that they can choose from. However, it's never gonna feel like you're competing with a, like too many people. Um, if they do interview, we try to move, I wanna say at least, it, it, it depends, but at least three, three people um, through the interview stage, some clients, they only want to interview one or two, and then they make a decision really quickly. Some oh, clients okay. they have a longer runway then they want to interview more people. So it's really case by case, but you know, John, we, again, we don't try to have too much competition for role. Got it. Understood. Oh, okay. So you, uh, brain trust actually filters the proposals that go to yeah. that the client sees. Yeah, we do. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So all the proposals um, that you submit, the right. top team member who's responsible for filling the job will review all of them, and they will recommend the two clients, you know, who they think are best matched. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So the uh, job posts. Um, you should. What I seen is that it says. For example, engineer times one. Does that mean that they're looking for 
just one engineer. Uh, so if, is that information like uh, re real or, tr or truly like, because I see a lot of jobs that only are, are only looking for one engineer, but I remember uh, that it was discussed that there are companies that are looking for 10 people for the same uh, role, but I haven't seen those. So sometimes you'll see times one, times two, times four, times five. I mean, I think the most I've seen is probably times five. Um, and they're absolutely real in terms of what the client has opened for us. I don't know if the client okay. is hiring elsewhere, right? So maybe they have right. a of headcount of 10 people, that, but they only allocated to um, brain fast. We just okay. show how many they allocate to us. I see, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the chat right now really quickly. It looks like people want to know, uh, okay, so telling stories better, which we'll, we'll get to definitely. Storytelling is so important. <laughs> um, and then writing proposals, that's fine. So I'm actually gonna do a separate proposal review, open proposal review session um, bi-weekly. Um, I'll send that information out so we can actually look at your proposal and for the role. And I'll get a talent team member with me so then we can make sure that you know your cover letter is extremely relevant to what they're looking for. General interviewing skills, that's fine. Um, soft skills, okay, happy to go through that as part of it. Um, hourly fixed rate question. Uh, okay, so I think it really depends, Renee, hourly or fixed rate. Um, that's something that I would defer to the talent team because it, again, it's client by client. So when you, that's when I say, hey, when you submit a proposal, we can actually help you um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis because we know what the hiring manager prefers. Okay. Um, all right. So any other questions that you have, feel free to drop it in chat. So I'm going to move on to things that make you stand out during the interview. And um, <laughs> this may feel generic but I need you to help me jump into what I'm trying to say because <clears throat> I tried really hard to distill down to only eight things. How prepared you are is super important. I mean, I've talked to people who are super smart, super talented, uh, but when we do the interview together, they it's obvious that they didn't research anything about the job or they're really trying to make things up on the spot. And it, it's, it's a disappointment, you know, because when people look at your portfolio and look at your work, they would have certain expectations of you already. And it, it's partly psychology, right? When they meet you, they want you to perform at the level that they've already researched about you. So if you're not prepared to them, it feels like, oh, maybe you don't care about this job so much, right? So this is actually a form of respect to the client, how prepared you are, how much relevant experience you have. So this goes to hand in hand with proposals. Um, we are not the type where it's a spray and pray platform. Um, if we ever see someone on the platform just applying to a bunch of jobs, um, we, we would have a conversation. We want you to really be picky about the roles that you want to apply to because if it's irrelevant, then you're wasting your time and you're wasting the client's time and our time too. So relevant experience includes the industry. Like, have you worked in this industry before? The specific skill sets, I mean, that's a no brainer. And then also the type of consumer, right? And what they're trying to drive at. Is it user acquisition? Is it um, scaling? Is it video views? Is it engagement? Like relevant experience, I can't stress enough, is so important, especially because all of you are so talented. So even though we're trying to do single digit proposals for clients to choose from, you're still going against other people who are uniquely talented, right? Um, so you wanna make sure at least the experience is super relevant to the job that you're applying to. Your appearance and Zoom background. And this is why I said, hey, let's turn on, um, Let's turn on video because then I can get an understanding of where we all are. Um, so fortunately, unfortunately, 
before uh, COVID, right? And before remote work, when we do interviews, we go to the client's office, right? We get to judge them. <laughs> but now they get to see our personal space, how little, how much you show, it says your personality. And we can't help it. We judge people based on what we see, right? And that might change, that might evolve, but I'm just speaking to right now what we can do. There's something you can do about your Zoom background and your appearance, at least to be professional and enthusiastic. Um, something about making a conversation instead of q and I, I see this more, um, I wanna say when it comes to technical um, interviews, it, it feels like it, it's almost like question and answer that makes that makes it feel very robotic. If there's a way for you to change the dialogue, so then the person feel like they're you're on the same playing field, you're on equal playing fields. Your partner's here, right? They're not your employer. You're not the employee. Your partners. We're consultants, right? Try to be at their level um, by having a conversation. So I, you know, I've been interviewing people for Brain Trust team and the best interviews, right? People say they don't remember what you say, but how you make them feel. You've heard of that before, right? Yeah. So if the interview turns into a nice conversation where they connect with you as a person, you bet they'll remember you. If it's just question and answer, that could have been an email. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? So um, if there's a way for you to like answer your question and then actually provoke a thought in them for them to contribute to your answer, that's the art of the interview. Your thoughtfulness. So this one is, um, I see a lot of people when let's say I ask a question, they're caught off guard. The knee jerk reaction is uh, they try to make something up while they answer me. Instead of doing that, it's twice, it's so much better if you take a pause. Even if you pause for 10 seconds and just say, hey, let me think about this. And then answer with thoughtfulness and consideration. I think that's, people will appreciate that so much more than you trying to piece together an answer on the spot how personable you are. Oh my gosh, Bill, you know, I'm going to call on you. Bill is someone who everyone loves. Um, he is uh, in Athens and he's hired by TaskRabbit and he's so engaged in the community. And every time we talk to him on camera, it's like, I want to be friends with you, right? They're just like people when you're talking to them on camera, like, I wish I could teleport to where you are and let's go grab coffee right now. <laughs> like those type of people, they stick in your head, right? Um, and so if there's a way that you can do that, but not lose your personality, you know, I'm not saying be someone you're not, but who is that personable person within you, right? How do you connect with other people best? Show that through Zoom. That is so hard, but it is an art, right? That's why interviews over Zoom are so hard. How do you pull your best personality to connect with others and display it on Zoom? That's the personal piece. Um, and then the last one I actually stole from Crystal. Crystal is a screener um, for Brain Trust. Uh, Crystal, can you wave? <laughs> so Crystal screens. Um, almost everyone who comes into Brain Trust. And she's the one who told me that over Zoom, you actually have to magnify your body language and your smiles because it's a tiny, tiny screen. Um, and people are not always paying attention. That's why when you smile, you have to exaggerate a little bit, slow down your speech and enunciate. A lot of times people like to talk fast especially when you're nervous, um, it doesn't help. <laughs> especially the internet has, is, you're already talking through the internet, sometimes there's bad connection. Slow down your speech, smile wider, and use body language. You know, I sometimes feel like it's, it's a performance. And however you wanna view it, it, it kinda is. 
Um, and we just have to adapt to this new reality, right? And it's, there's nothing phony about it. It's, it's communication, right? Um, does this all make sense so far? Yeah, yeah. so I'm, tr I'm trying to provide some context than just telling you generic things. I'm giving you reasons and hopefully you can feel like the philosophy behind it and also the why, right? Okay. So next is we're gonna do mini market reviews. Um, since we have more engineers on the call, I think I'm gonna start with the front end engineer. So how this works is we're gonna review this um, JD together and then I'm gonna ask you questions. And then um, the engineers on the line, I'm gonna please ask you to volunteer, otherwise this thing won't work. Okay. So this is for Guardian Life. It's an active role on the platform right now. Okay, can I ask if you guys are seeing the job description uh, clearly? Okay, so this is a senior front end engineer role with Guardian Life, full time 40 hours a week, 70 to $100 an hour. And then I'm actually gonna paste this in chat so you guys can scroll on your own instead of. So feel free to pull that up on your screen. And then may I, do we have uh, front end engineers on the call? Bill, any other front end engineers? Yes. Who is that? Is it Farouk? Yeah, that's me. Okay, fantastic. Any full stack engineers? Full stack? Yes, uh, yeah, it's me, okay. Uh, like, yeah. Good job, okay. Guess, tell you what, anyone who participates in this live session with me, I'll send you 50 B tracks. How's that? Is that good? <laughs> Let's do that. All right. So um, I'm going to start asking questions. All right. <clears throat> Have you had time to review yet? All right. So the first question is, tell me about yourself. The three engineers, one of you take this one. Tell me about yourself based on this job description. I can take this. Okay, please. All right, so good morning, Shirley. I'm Bill. I'm a senior front-end engineer uh, located in Athens, Greece. I've been doing this for a little bit over 11 years and I've got Quite a bit of experience with React Redux, a little bit with Next.js, and I'm getting better with uh, TypeScript lately. Um, I looked over the role. I think, you know, we'd be a great match. Um, and I'd like to hear a little bit more about the position. Great. So, Bill, um, I know I'm putting you on the spot. But I, I like I like that you called out 11 years. So let me tell you the, the pros. Okay, I like that you called out 11 years. I like that you were very, um, I wanna say it feels very real and authentic the way you were talking, right, your speech. We generally say if people have less than five years, don't say how many years, okay? So just say several years of experience. If you have more than five years, then you say six years, seven years. So Bill said 11 years, which is impressive. Okay, so that's gold star. Um, and then senior front end React engineer, calling that out right away and actually saying the skills that you have is great because that's exactly what I'm looking for. When I say, tell me about yourself, I think generally we want to hear a bit more of a story. Um, and in this case, Typically, this question comes up as the first question or first couple questions. So you want to paint context, like paint the picture for 
the interviewer to know who you are as a person and wow them right away. And how you wow them is showing relevancy and accomplishments, right? So what you can do is this one's looking for a marketplace, right? It's looking for uh, building an exceptional digital marketplace. So if you have marketplace experience with a big client brand, say that right away, right? 11 years React engineering experience. I've completed projects with XYZ marketplaces um, in these industries, right? So Guardian Life is, um, what is that? Like in insurance um, industry. So if you have relevant industry experience, that's where you say it too. And then uh, look at what they're looking for you to do. So collaborative environment, product owners, engineers, um, building future, future of ins insurance tech, right? So talking, talking to them about your experience working with other people on the team um, and how you built something that's a, for huge enterprises. Because Guardian Life is a fortune something company. Right. So the size of the company as well, you want to say that. Um, and then finally, name the skills. So you go from broad, painting the picture of success and showing the relevancy right away, and then to narrow. You know, I also did these skills. I would say the skills are not uh, necessary to list all of them, but the main ones you can basically pay a nod to by just mentioning them at the end. Um, does that make sense? What do you guys think about that? Is that fair feedback? Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. I also, I also think it, uh, it's fair to say that if any of us actually had to prepare for an interview, we'd be able to read a little bit more into it, see, see what they want. I think a little bit more than like two minutes to, to see the, um, to see the posting. I know, Bill. I put you on the spot. <laughs> I try. I try to. I try to look them up. Um, go to their website. Sometimes um, some clients don't even have a website because that's why they're on Brain Trust. They they're trying to build that online image. So some are harder to research than others. So you kind of have to go through what they're looking for and kind of read between the lines because a lot of um, a lot of people don't really know what they're looking for, especially with senior roles. Uh, so a lot of the times they're gonna be looking for someone who does front end, but they, they're they gonna want them to dive a little bit into the back end. So that's something that's usually gonna come up organically during the interview. That's, that's what I've seen. So there's usually some skills and some overlap that's kind of between the lines. So naturally an interview will just progress. That's why it's kind of a, a back and forth. Uh, a lot. I, I feel like a lot of people feel like they're being put on the spot when they're in an interview, like they're being judged. When most of the times the client has already done the, the, the pre-judging when they saw your proposal, they saw your profile, they saw your resume. They're there to kind of know who you are and do you fit in with a team? Do you bring in skills that they didn't even think about? A lot of that kind of stuff. So Bill, would you say that's where the conversation comes in, like turning question and answer session into a conversation and then actually exploring the role more with the client. So then it shows that you're on equal playing fields, right? You're like a consultant, not necessarily an employee. Yeah, definitely. Um, pretty recently when I did the interview with um, Playhouse Studios and they're looking for a senior web developer. They they didn't they haven't even um, settled on like their their tech stack yet. So we kind of talked through it and what they're looking for, and they kind of saw to my experience working with remote teams because I've been working remotely for the past three or so years with my previous job at Nimber and now with TaskRabbit. And they're like, oh, maybe you can teach us some of that stuff. You know how we can be better working with a remote team, working asynchronously with a team that's in different time zones and worldwide. So that's why I'm, I'm saying that sometimes the, the clients don't really know what they're 
looking for specifically, but there's no need to feel that kind of pressure that, oh my God, this is like make or break. Usually they kind of want to find out who you are, um, what you're doing, what are your strengths? Um, what do you feel like you could maybe take from this opportunity? So I'm, I'm always like brutally honest with anything that I'm like really good at and I like doing and anything that I'm not that good at or I'm learning right now um, because it's better to know that kind of stuff up front and some things might be a deal breaker for them but you know what are you going to do you're not going to you know there's there's no need to to kill yourself over that that kind of stuff just be yourself and be be honest and upfront and that's the best you can do i think absolutely really good feedback thank you bill um gajendra i'm going to ask you to answer the next question okay uh, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so based on this role, and I'm the interviewer, I ask you, what type of role are you looking for? How would you answer? So uh, I prefer to be a full stack. So uh, for my choice, because of that, like, then I can contribute in any part of the system, whether it is the front end or back end, and I can more expressively uh, put my skills on the, uh, on the uh, really uh, where the uh, my skills can add a value on the business and at least uh, something uh, I can contribute it on that. Okay. Um, okay, I guess it's it's not directly apples to apples when they're looking for a senior front-end engineer where you're full stack, right? Would you say, yeah, so that's why I'm not gonna have, I can't, I'm putting you on the spot again, right? This is just mock interview. Um, essentially, when they're asking what you're looking for, what they're really wanting to hear is, are you going to be happy with this role, right? They want to make sure that you're going to be happy and you're passionate about this, then you will do a good job, right? They can ask something, but they really want to hear, is this for you? Not just, is this for them, right? Or are you for them? So some things that you want to convey here is your passion. Passion either in the type of product that they're building, marketplaces right, um, for consumers, right, that impact millions of people. That's why you're looking for enterprise projects, right? Um, I wanna say, mention the, the type of project, is it full-time? So you can, and this is long-term. So saying that, hey, I'm looking for something that's more of a full-time project, long-term, I can develop a relationship with you. Um, I have a passion in creating marketplaces because I want to see my work impacting millions of people, especially in X industry, right? So basically give, saying back, what are the requirements to them and why, right? Of course, don't lie, only do this if you really, really believe in it, right? Um, and so I think that's, that's what they want to hear is if you'll be happy in this role. Um, okay, does that make sense everyone? Yep, it's, it's making com completely sense. Uh, but I have a question, like, uh, when they are, uh, as, as you raise, like, uh, I'm completely agree with Bill, like, when we are opting for an interview, then sometimes uh, interviewer uh, not uh, keen to give some time, like, more than two or three minutes. Then it is the question to summarize the, our answer according to their stack. Like, if, uh, say, uh, I'm I, I'm perfectly agree with you as far as concern of the business need. Like uh, we are keen and very passionate to, toward the uh, marketplace. I have worked with the marketplace in previous also, but it's a short one. It's not a big one. Like and uh, in many other domains, I have already worked like retail education and then the virtual webcast also like different type of integration from Zoom, WebEx and others for the client. But at the same time, like when we are pitching to clients. Uh, what I saw in uh, giving more than uh, 80 interviews. So then uh, sometimes client is uh, in a client is in judgmental state. Like, okay, see this, this uh, candidate have uh, this much of the skills. Uh, maybe like as Bill say, like we have a strong JavaScript, but we have a basic uh, type script, but they are looking for like the interview, but particularly uh, that is depend only the technical interviewer, not the, uh, every every particular uh, client so what they are uh, 
is his particular focus is of a particular point not on the full stack like if you are just uh, if you are asking if you are just scroll this particular list uh, i am fully confident that no one is here is fully perfect on all the stacks someone is on the top of some particular stack and someone on the other but what they are looking for like uh, if the interviewer have a skill set of type script he will more emphasize on that particular thing rather on listening to the other skill sets that that is also a question basically yeah yeah definitely i mean people are not rarely will you be perfect um for a role but i think it's it's getting to their must haves right i think with any inter- any job description must haves is really three to five things right. it's not everything in there so it's it's practice makes perfect you would read over and over again then you can extract what they're really wanting right so yeah good point um i, I, I think your point is uh, making sense for me like before and uh, applying to any job let's discuss with the one to one with the uh, connected people who is just uh, the directly interacting interacting with the client so mm-hmm. it is it, it will be giving us a more age to understand what are the actual requirement of the client and we can prepare accordingly that yep. that is make more sense you got it and that's why again i said we have talent team members who can do that with you um and whenever you have actually an interview scheduled you know what just hit me up surely at usebraintrust.com and i'll trade i'll coach with you thank you yeah for real are you ready i have um we're running out of time so i'm going to go faster now Okay, so next next question I want to ask you for Roop is, tell me about a project you're really proud of. Uh, can you can you please repeat? Sure. Tell me about a project that you're really proud of. Okay, so um, in this case, um, maybe I'm not um, sure whether should I like uh, answer. Give an answer that may maybe be a measure match for for this client, or a really um, I don't know an honest answer, because uh, um, I already uh, developed a software a software for an insurance company, and I know like what the challenges are, and um, like what's special about that software, what's like specific, different than than your usual. Uh, web app, mobile app, consumer app, and so on. So, um, and at this point, and I'm I'm not sure whether I should like be really honest and say it's not my like like dream job to develop software for for insurance companies, but uh, in the end, maybe the domain is not that important. But the great personality fit, or working for a great team, or on an interesting piece of technology is, is more important in this case. So I'm not sure, uh, you, you mentioned that we shouldn't uh, lie, but maybe we shouldn't like talk about projects that are not at all related uh, to this particular uh, uh, job post. Okay, that is very good consideration. And, and by you bringing that up shows how thoughtful you are right now to me. Um, I, so I want to acknowledge that, first of all. Second of all, you are correct. If you are not interested in insurance industry, don't apply to this job, right? Even if you've done it before, don't, unless you really need to for any reason, then, then do so. Um, let's say you really like insurance, okay, and you want to apply for this job. And then let's come to the decision of, do I talk about a project I'm truly really proud of that's not insurance? Or do I talk about a project that's insurance related that I'm just okay about, right? In this case, think about the project that you're truly proud of. Are there elements in here that matches the job description? For example, is it market, right? Is it for an enterprise? Did you work with a team of product managers? Did you use the same skills? React, Redux, um, Next.js, TypeScript. Um, what type of environment is it, right? So try to see if there's anything that can match. It's not just the industry, right? As, as relatable, as relevant as possible is the guide, is a rule of thumb, okay? 
but we also don't want you to talk about something that you're not proud of, right? So that's really your judgment call, but I can only give like the guidance, the general guidance. I'll also add something that's worked well for me is that uh, if, if, if you pick the job that you're most proud of because of the results you brought to the company you were working for, you made them millions of dollars, you got tons of users for them, everybody was happy in, in the executive department, uh, whatever it may be, uh, people will listen to that who, who, are, who are on the call with you and they'll be like, oh, okay, so this person is results oriented. We want somebody who brings in results for the project. That's great. And, 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 I, and I find there's strong alignment there. Very, very good point, Taylor. And that's actually my second part about storytelling. You know, when, when people, if you did actually answer the question, Farouk, I would ask you to say, tell me a project, what you're really proud of. You're going to tell me why you're proud of it because of the business results it drove and because of the impact you made, utilizing, doing something that you're passionate about. That's what makes you proud, right? The common mistakes people do here is just describe the project to me without telling me why are you proud? They'll say, I use React, I use um, TypeScript, and I developed an app with eight other people, and it took six months. That doesn't mean anything to me, right? So what Taylor said, what's the business result? Who was involved? What was your role specifically, right? Were you a contributor, individual contributor? Were you a team manager? Um, what are some challenges that you had to solve and overcome? Um, that's why you're proud of it. Typically people are proud of something because it was a challenge, because it was difficult and there's a high bar to reach. So talk about that. That's the storytelling, that's the story arc. A challenge, who was involved, how did you solve it, the end result, business impact, right? So that's, that's telling the story piece. Okay, that's a great, that's a great point. Then I know uh, the answer to, to this question. And when I frame it, uh, you know, in a, in a more, um, um, I don't know, uh, as a business story and as an output, as a team story. And like we, the technologies that maybe in, might be interested to them, then it, it could be a, a, a really, really great story. Like what was the, uh, the challenge when I joined, uh, what technology we used, what business problem uh, we solved, how I elevated that team, how I helped helped uh, the management and what the final output was uh, in terms of uh, business metrics and and uh, user engagement. And that's uh, um, what, what we are doing after all. We are trying to, to help any business and to increase user engagement, whether it's a con consumer app or it's, uh, whether it, it, it's, a, it's a, a business app. In the end, you want to make your users happy, hence make the business owners happy and in the end, everybody uh, will be happy. Just, I have a small objection to this. Sometimes I noticed um, by talking with, I don't know, managers and business owners and startup founders, sometimes they just want you to be purely technical. So they want you to be highly specialized and they don't want you like to care too much about the product. They just have one big particular technical challenge uh, uh, that they want you to solve. But usually those are like short-term engagements where you need to like be a, a sort of like plug and play engineer to um, step in, solve a big technical like challenge and that just walk out. And I think when they want like to engage with you on a, on a, in a longer term, uh, they want you to care more about the product, the team, the story, the vision and all that. Oh, spot That's on, spot on Farouk. That's why this one is 40 hour a week, long-term ongoing. Like this is most likely 12 month project. I don't know and more, but like you said, the longer the project, the more they want you to know about the company and the business goal. Cause that's how you build together and actually succeed. Sometimes they just need someone to solve a problem or just like rebuild an app real quick because the previous legacy code is messed up. They just want you to be super technical. And it, then I would ask you like, are you okay with that, right? Do you just want, do you want a short-term gig right now? Um, is that your type of project? Are you, or do you only wanna pick clients where 
they want to collaborate with you on a business level, right? So I think there, there's some research there, initial research that you can do. One thing that I do when I used to um, like look for projects or apply to work is actually look up people on LinkedIn who previously held the same position and see if I can have a conversation and just see like, what is the work environment, right? What's the culture there? Who's a hiring manager? I like stock the hiring manager, just Google everything you can find on them. And then like, for some, like I want to watch a video on them if possible. Then I can see, oh, what's their style, right? Are they going to value my opinion? If you don't care about that, then it doesn't matter. But I care about it. Um, it sounds like you care too. So I would, I would put that earnest like initial like work on you and make the decision. So you're not walking into a frustrating situation. Yeah, and sometimes you just cannot like find anything on them. You cannot treat them, and sometimes you just need to read the room and think on your feet. Yeah, as as the interview interview goes. You know? Yeah, yeah. I would. I mean, if this is a common scenario or challenge to developers, I'd love to dive in deeper on a different session, and we can discuss how to navigate and what are some like actual words you can use, right? To um, to for for certain situations <clears throat> okay so this is great discussion i'm so happy um i'm gonna go back to my presentation because i feel like the mock interviews are taking a long time can you see my presentation again yeah okay so i'm just gonna go through this really quickly but um like tell me about scenario that you had to work with other team members to solve a problem again it's storytelling here Right, so it's similar to before. It's like who's involved, what was the challenge, complexity of the challenge, what was your role, what was their role, and so you might remember this. But when we were doing mock interviews together, this question it's important to use these two words. One is we, right, and the other word they want to hear is I. So you want to say we because you show your team, your team player, and you considered other people, right, that was with you. I is to be able to say, okay, you clearly understood your role and what is it specifically that you did to solve the problem, right? You can't just blend in with the rest. You have to know what you did, right? Either you're a leader or an individual contributor or something else, right? So this is to show what I'm really asking is, are you a team player? Do you know your role and other people's roles clearly when you solve problems? Okay. I'll share this deck later, so um, you don't have to take that many notes, but I'm gonna breeze through the rest of the slides real quick. We only have five minutes left. Um, this is how people evaluate um, our team internally, as well as the clients that we've spoken to. Your content, which is what you say, your delivery, how you say it, and your interpersonal skills, right? So your personality and the soft skills that we talked about. Um, the content, most important thing here is how relevant your experience and what you say. Um, don't derail. Don't, if I was interviewing someone before for, um, you know, a design role. And the first thing they told me was, um, you know, a completely different subject about them. It's like, um, I immediately want to zone out. It's like, just tell me what I want to hear first. And then if we are vibing, then give me the supplemental information, right? Like let's, let's make sure that you are the right person before we spend more time um, investing in getting to know each other outside of the, the work scope, right? Does that make sense? Delivery. So when you answer questions, no one-liners, right? We talked about turning things into conversations. Conversations are longer than one sentence. But at the same time, you don't wanna go over one to three minutes because then it's just, they will space out, right? Um, interpersonal skills. So we talked about larger gestures, smiles, slow down when you talk, um, try to pull out as much warmth as you can as, as a human, because we're all emotional animals, right? Behind the screen. We want to feel something. It's not just checking a list of skills. If you can connect with a person across the screen, you just stand out more. So very quickly, Zoom setup. I'm just gonna walk through this. This is so important, more than you can um, imagine. 
a well-lit environment. Um, never use a laptop, always use a desktop. Don't use a phone. I've done mock interviews with people on mobile phones and I'm just like, why? <laughs> um, Bill, I know you, you talked about this before, but you still got the job. Um, make sure the computer is on a firm surface. Don't balance it on your lap. Um, simpler background, the better. Quiet environment. All of this tells the person that you're prepared and you're excited. Video on always, okay? Dress for the role. So typically what we say, especially for brain talk clients, it's more enterprise. Um, so we would say, try to dress more professional um, for these roles. Of course, it really depends on the company. Some are startups, some are, you know, more, um, I guess they, they celebrate unique individu individuality. So this goes with your research on a hiring manager and the team culture, look at their social media if they have it, look at their website, and then dress accordingly because they're also looking for team fit, right? Even though you're remote. So avoid all of these things. Um, awkward angles is weird, like lighting behind you, try to avoid that. Um, and then check your avatar name, right? Your name and your avatar on Zoom, make sure nothing awkward. Um, and then battery internet connection, like these are just the most obvious things we wanna make sure we uh, take care of. So that's what I have for today. I'm going to address, this is my email. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, or um, like how we can dive into different things, um, let, let's look at that. I just agree on the pet. I know. Do you guys want to see my pet? This is my pet. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> He's 13 years old and he has no teeth. That's why his tongue is leaking out. <laughs> but anyway. Um, okay, so let me see if there's any questions. Okay, it looks like there's some just one off questions. Feel free to do I recommend gentlemen wear a tie and jacket? Not necessarily. Um, you, you don't want to be too stuffy either. Just try to dress a little bit, uh, a higher, a level, one level above what you expect the hiring manager to dress, but not to like square, like shirt and tie. That's, you know, it, it really depends on the client, but generally I don't think brain trust clients expect that from you. Okay. All right. Well, was this helpful? Yeah, this was great. Okay. Sure. I'm so glad. Um, please connect with me. Have any suggestions and let's dive in some more. All right. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Farouk. And uh, thank you, the other gentleman already left. But I'll send you Beach House tokens for um, mock interview with me live. All right. Yep, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great sure. weekend. Have a great thank night. you. Sure. Bye, 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 bye. 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 Bye.